First <clears throat> Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six verse three. Paul writes, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men, of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself when we look at verse 4 Timothy mentions that there are things that can lead us to a position of envy a position of uh, hating or wanting bad for others because of something that, uh, that we um, are jealous of, something that we want. And he says that there are things that lead to that and there are things that it leads to. Envy is a, uh, a very uh, problematic sin. It is a very dangerous sin. It is uh, a sin that is unfortunately rampant today. It's not wrong for people to want better things. It's not wrong for people to want to work hard and, and to uh, achieve greater things. But today we live in a society and even we see in the scripture where individuals wanted these things but, but they wanted them at the uh, destruction of others who had those things. In other words, it wasn't enough for them to seek uh, those things that they wanted they wanted the demise of the people who already had it and uh, from that point of view they, they sought to they, they just developed a hatred for people who have what they wanted it developed into something more than just jealousy in other words they were jealous of what others had and uh, rather than uh, trying to, to gain those things uh, honestly and legally uh, they, they developed a hatred for those individuals who had that. And rather than uh, doing the best that they could with what they had and being content with what they had uh, and working harder to see if they could achieve more and develop more, uh, they simply uh, allowed their hatred to, uh, to want to bring down people who have what they wanted. This is a very childish attitude. <laughs> it is a very uh, uh, sad attitude. And the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, that it is an attitude that we as Christians must put away. That we must get away from such uh, ideas of malice and envy. Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through verse 21, envy is uh, referenced as a work of the flesh, and those who participate in such cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Why would we talk about envy? Matthew chapter 27, verse 18, the Bible tells us that for envy the people delivered Jesus to the courts, to Pilate. Pilate recognized that they delivered Jesus because of their envy, their hatred for him. And their hatred had developed into a malicious type of hatred and envy. The Proverbs writer tells us in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30, A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy is the rottenness of the bones. Envy can lead to a person uh, developing other such attitudes that will destroy their lives. They, their whole attitude will be filled with hate. They can't ever be content, as the Bible teaches us, because they're always looking for what other people have. They're always looking at what other people are doing. And uh, there's nothing wrong with looking and saying, that's how I want to live or that's where I want to be 
or that's what I want, and them working and striving to gain that, but to want the people to be destroyed for having something you want is an attitude that will lead to discontent and envy. Perhaps no other example in the Bible uh, expresses this so eloquently than the one we find in Genesis chapter 37. And for the rest of our time, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 37, a well-known historical story that we all know and have been taught since our youth. But one that shows forth all the things there that we pointed out in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Those things that lead to envy and those things that envy lead towards. The rottenness of the bones. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 1, The Bible says Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. And these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with, his, with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought into his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw uh, that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And if you'll drop down to uh, verse 11, the Bible says his brethren envied him. Brethren envied him. There are many things that can lead a person to envy. In this particular example, we see a a, an example of what led the brothers to envy Joseph. Israel loved Joseph more than his other sons. He showed respect to persons, as we talked about in our Bible class this morning. His favoritism uh, of Joseph was not hidden. It was open. He showed this favoritism with the coat of many colors. Joseph's brothers uh, wanted what Joseph had. They wanted their uh, father's love and acceptance, but that grew into something more sinister, didn't it? They didn't just want what Joseph had. They wanted what Joseph had and wanted Joseph to lose what he had. Now this is only one example of what could lead to envy. Israel obviously was wrong in, in how he uh, treated his sons. But obviously the sons were wrong in how they dealt with that same respect. Many things today leads or can breed envy in our hearts. The Bible tells us that the root of all kinds of evil is the love of money. Money has led many individuals to seek to hurt others in order to... Uh, feel some importance or to feel some gain rather than to uh, enjoy the fruit of their labor they want to see the demise of individuals who have what they want the same goes with possessions some people uh, are envious of how other people look we, uh, we note this because of the media in our society the magazines the movies uh, they're always uh, promoting the physical uh, attractiveness of individuals over the content of these individuals' character. And then when they fall into trouble, they don't understand why it was brought about. People may look and say, People may be led to envy because of their skills, their abilities. Pro athletes, movie stars, people who are put on pedestals. These, these individuals have gained what they have gained. 
And as long as they have uh, done so uh, legally and honestly, we should not seek for them to be punished for simply being good at what they do. Israel was wrong to show favoritism and respect for Joseph. That was a sin. But Joseph's brothers went about it the wrong way. They could have sought Israel's love and acceptance at the same time that Joseph received the love and the acceptance. In verses 4 through verse 11, we see that this envy destroys a family. Verse 5, we, uh, we see that Joseph dreamed a dream. He told it to his brethren and they hated him yet more. He tells them the dream uh, and they, uh, they verse 8, his brethren said to him, shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Their, in, their initial envy led them to hate him more every time he spoke. In other words, they were prejudiced against, about, uh, against the things he was speaking. They weren't interested in hearing it. Rather than hearing the truth of the matter, they simply saw it as further degradation of their own position in life. Whereas they could have seen it as a message from God, which is what it was. They could have, if being honest, implored more or asked about questions about it. Rather, their envy allowed them to ignore the truth and hate him more. That takes place today. People uh, fail to listen to good advice, to good counsel because they already have an attitude that will not allow them to open their ears to the truth. And that attitude leads them down uh, even a more harmful path. As we pointed out in verse 11, the Bible says his brethren envied him and uh, his, uh, his brethren went to feed their father's flock. Verse 12, and Israel said to Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren, tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed thence, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, the dreamer cometh. Come now therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Verse 21, Reuben heard it and uh, he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him of, out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. So Reuben, uh, one of the brothers, saw that the envy had led them to a unreasonable position to seek their father's love and admiration, something that Joseph had, by getting rid of Joseph, by, by committing murder. Now this may uh, be the furthest extent, right, or the extreme of what envy can lead to, but it is a, an example of what envy can do. It can cause people to make extremely bad decisions. Reuben, on the other hand, saw that this was an unreasonable position and he sought to, uh, to save his brother, but um, that was not to be in this particular uh, aspect as Joseph was sold into slavery. When people begin to feel envious of someone else because of what someone has over them, 
it's difficult to regain that the, the original relationship because envy leads to further hatred. It leads to more pain and no good. It led to these bad decisions. Their jealousy was out of control. They wanted to kill their younger brother. The brothers threw Joseph in a pit and they left him there for dead. Verse, uh, they even uh, ignored his cries for help, the Bible says. Eventually Joseph was sold uh, for 20 shekels of silver. When people hold envy into their heart, it leads them to make bad decisions. Unreasonable decisions. And that's what took place here in Genesis chapter 37. As we pointed out, Reuben saw the foolishness and the unreasonableness of this envy. But the jealousy and the envy of the other brothers affected him as well. It also affected Israel, the father. And perhaps most of all, it affected Joseph. First, it affected Joseph. He had been left for dead by the people he thought loved him. He then has his own family sell him as a slave. The Bible tells us that his life as a slave was not very pleasant, but God was with him the whole way. We study and understand the providence of God through the life of Joseph. But Joseph was accused of things that he never did. He had to run for his life. He was often put into harm's way. But because of God, the providence of God, Joseph was taken care of. But he was away from his father. He was away from home. He was away from his family. He was alone. The brothers wanted him to lose everything. And in essence, he had lost everything at that point in time. Why was it so important for the brothers to cause Joseph to lose in order for them to gain? That's the envy. When people uh, want to gain, and there's nothing in inherently wrong with gaining or growing or progressing, but when they wanted someone to fall at the same time, rather than trying to lift themselves up at, to the same uh, point where they are uh, happy and content, they, they, not, they don't just want to be brought up, they want those who have what they want to be brought down. Joseph was basically killed that day. He was killed in the eyes of his brother, figuratively speaking. In verse 29, Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and Reuben rent his clothes. And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not nigh, whither shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed the goat of the uh, kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and they brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or not. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. So as Joseph is uh, continuing to be sold 
into slavery and to continue that life away from home. Reuben mourns. Renting the clothes at this time was a, a, sh- a sign of uh, distress and pain and mourning. Reuben mourned because he had seen what envy had led his brothers to do. Reuben probably also knew how this was going to devastate his father. These brothers didn't think of how it was going to affect their their older brother, did they? They didn't seem to care that it was going to hurt their older brother, Reuben. They wanted what they wanted, and and what they wanted was to get what Joseph had and cause Joseph to lose it. And they didn't care about how that would affect others. Envy, obviously, affected everybody involved, didn't it? Their envy started way up here for whatever reason, and we know in this particular case it was respect of persons and their jealousy and uh, that led to envy. But whatever it is, whether, it, whether it's the love of money or possessions or, or, or whatever it is that leads someone to have envy in their heart, we see the snowball that, that occurs that leads to the bad decisions, destroyed relationships, and now affecting others who they obviously didn't care about. They were only concerned about themselves. They hurt their brother Reuben, but they got what they wanted. They obviously didn't care about how it would affect Jacob, their father. Can you imagine? Think of the hypocrisy wanting the love and admiration of their father. And in order to do so, they broke his heart. (laughs) They broke his heart. You know, there are more rational ways to do what they wanted. They could have easily gone to their father and talked to him about it. Have you considered how we feel when you do these things to to Joseph? They could have gone to Joseph. Joseph from all we understand, was a very reasonable man even at a young age. He would have probably gone to his father and said, this is how this is affecting our family. It has to stop. But that wasn't the response, was it? Because their envy, the hatred and the jealousy led them to desire what someone else had and to destroy the one who had it even if it meant to destroy the happiness of their, other, their older brother and of their own father. The Bible tells us that Jacob rent his clothes, put on sackcloth, and mourned many days. When the family came to comfort him, can you imagine if these brothers came to comfort their father who they had lied to or deceived, they may have not uh, explicitly lied and said, hey, Joseph was eaten by a beast. But they did everything they could to make it look that way. The result was the same, and so the sin is equally as bad. To make it look like something that it's not, the deceit is as sinful as explicitly saying the lie. People fail to see that today. Well, I didn't exactly lie. I didn't tell him a lie. But you allowed him to believe a lie and you knew the truth. They knew what they were doing. They wanted Jacob to believe that Joseph was dead. Number one, to cover up the other sin that they had just done. Sold their brother into slavery. They had to cover up for that sin. Can you, How could you gain your father's love by selling a brother into slavery, right? Their father wouldn't love them then. But they got rid of Joseph, so that meant that the love that he gave to Joseph was going to now come to them. That doesn't follow necessarily either. These brothers needed to go to Jacob and explain there's a difficult problem in our our family that needs to be worked out. 
Jacob wasn't going to automatically give the same admiration and love to those other brothers that he gave to Joseph unless he knew about the problem. So they deceived their father. Their envy of wanting their father's love led them to do a despicable, hateful thing. To deceive their father. To cause him grief. To cause him great pain. To cause him to mourn. They could have done another thing that would have caused him to mourn, but, that, but it would have been godly mourning. Had they come to him and been honest with him, he could have mourned godly, recognizing that he was wrong for showing favoritism. Right? In 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10, the Bible tells us that godly sorrow leads to repentance. Jacob, if he had known how these brothers had felt, could have mourned godly mourning, which could have led to repentance and could have restored a loving relationship in this family. It could have strengthened a relationship between Joseph and his brothers and resolved the problem that the brothers had with their father. But their envy led them to this to hurt their father. The Bible never tells us that Joseph or that these brothers got what they wanted other than Joseph out of their lives. The Bible never tells us that now that Joseph was gone, Jacob loved the other sons as much as he loved Joseph. Because that's not what they really appealed to. Ultimately, envy led them to wanting Joseph to be destroyed more than getting what they wanted. And we see that in the world today. People wanting something and there, and there being nothing necessarily wrong with wanting something as long as you work hard and, and work to do it legally and honestly, but that's not enough. They want the people who have what they want to be destroyed. Envy leads to bad decisions and it affects others. Reuben, Jacob, both hurt. It, uh, Joseph sold into slavery. Now, we know this is just the beginning of the story. And we know that uh, when we finish the book of Genesis that through God's providential hand, Joseph is brought to a position of prominence. And that position of prominence is uh, not necessarily to help his brothers, but indirectly it did because God's plan was for the whole nation of Israel. And that Joseph would have a hand in that providentially, making sure that that bloodline would survive this difficult famine. And that through that lineage would come the seed of woman that would bruise the head of the serpent. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The seed that which is Christ. Galatians chapter 3. In Joseph's position as one of the top authorities in Egypt, he was able to encounter his brothers and rather than reciprocating the hatred and the jealousy and the envy that his brothers had shown to him, he returned love. He returned an honest heart. And it was that love that finally brought the relationship back together. Something that could have been done a long time ago. A soft heart ultimately brought this family back together. We're not promised an outcome like Joseph's. Most people who are affected by envy 
The story doesn't end like that. Most people who are affected by envy destroy their life, destroy someone else's life, destroys that person's loved one's lives, and may destroy their own family's lives. Envy is a devastating sin. As I pointed out, it's a very immature sin. With maturity and strengthening, we can understand that when we have issues, we can deal with them. And that we ought not to seek to hurt others for our own gain. And we need to realize to be content with what we have, we have to appreciate what we have. And we need to appreciate that what others have is because they have worked hard for it. And that if we want what they have, there may not necessarily be anything wrong with that as long as we seek to do so honestly and legally. But we should never want to hurt others for our own gain. We should never want that. God and His Son Jesus are the epitome of that example, right? God gave His only begotten Son that even the worst sinners of the world could have their past sins remitted. Jesus, who committed no sin, who had done nothing wrong, was delivered because of envy, but gave Himself voluntarily so that the people who nailed Him to the cross could have their sins forgiven. The truth is, we don't have any reason to be jealous of anyone else. God grants grace to all men. We just have to appropriate that grace. God gave His only begotten Son so that every man could have that blessing if they'll obey His Gospel. God sent His Word and has providentially preserved it for us today so that all men could read it and hear it and understand it and obey it. We're all equal in the sight of God. We've all been given one plan to follow. God is not a respecter of persons. We have no reason to envy or to be jealous if our heart is in the right place, if our eyes are on the right goal, if we are seeking heaven and laying up treasures there rather than laying up treasures here. Peter said to rid our hearts of envy. The Bible tells us to lay aside those weights that easily beset us. To put away, to put off those old ways of sin. And to put on the new man whose focus is on Jesus. Whose focus is on His humble life and His humble sacrifice and all that He did for us. When individuals focus on that, it's difficult to look at your fellow man and want their demise. Those who have not yet obeyed the Gospel have the opportunity to hear the Word and believe it, repent of their past sins and confess that Jesus is the Christ, and through obeying His will be immersed in water to have their past sins washed away, being added to the Lord's church, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, and living a life of faithfulness in, order, in, in harmony with God's will so that we might receive a crown of life, Revelation 2, verse 10. For those who may have already obeyed those initial acts but have allowed something to separate them from God to get in between them and God uh, to cause them to fall, God wants you to come back home has given us a way to do that through asking for forgiveness, acknowledging what we have done is wrong, and turning away from that and not doing it again. We can have those sins forgiven, washed in the blood, as if they never occurred. Whatever need you have this afternoon, come now as we stand and sing.